Hey guys, um, we are here with another Tap Tuesday podcast. I'm with Bancroft and Barney, and we're going to be talking to you about a new tradition that we are taking within the team and how that's going to progress. You good? Yeah. Mm. Um, hi, uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> we're here to talk about the Edison Cup, um, and that's something that we decided to do in the summer of 2021, the summer just gone. Um, but for this one, our second one, and for the next ones moving forward, we're going to basically record them and televise them and put them on uh, YouTube for you guys to see because we all love Edison format. Um, we think it's great. I, I mean, the boys that still play meta, and I know Bancroft, you still play meta, right? I do indeed, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> That's Edison's a very nice break. I think, yeah. Really, the cups are really good. Um, we had the first one, as you said, back in the summer of 2021, and it was it was more casual. People took a lot of like, I wouldn't say like critical bad decks, but like underprepared and like raw decks. But this time, like, it was very different. Yeah, you could really see like people upping their what they're playing. Do you want to go through uh, what we uh, what we Can't played in the tournament? The, the oh yeah, decks in the room. Yeah, yeah. So we had 13 players. Um, so. We've got about, how many people have we got in the Disciples? Like, all of us in total, it's like 16 of us, right? Yes, yeah, like 16 Around, around that number. So yeah, most yeah. of us most of us were able to make this one. Um, I would show you guys the trophy, but it's off getting engraved at the minute because there's a <laughs> winner, right? We can't spoil too much. You guys have got to watch the videos. We've got the first video coming out on Thursday. But yeah, there was 13 of us. Um, and there were lots of different decks. Should I just go through them? Yeah, Should I go through? Do it. We've got, two, we had two Diva Hero. Uh, two Blackwing, two Frog Monarch. We had one Hero Beat, one Light Sworn, one Flamvel, one Zombie, one Vayu, one Quick Jaw Dandy Warrior, and one Dragon deck. So that's a nice spread of different yeah. decks. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was very diverse. Um, what did you guys play? I played Frog Monarch. Um, do we want to like all go through and then we can say why? Or yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. it. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So yes, I, and I played a Diva Hero. Diva Hero. I myself played Blackwing. Um, so I guess, firstly, Bancroft, you decided to play Diva Hero. Arguably one of the best decks, if not the best deck, playing at the minute, because it is very strong and very diverse. Go on, talk us through Diva Hero. All right, so firstly, I have a really big gripe with the Ed, Ed and Edison channel, which we're going to talk about quite a lot this uh, this, this video. All right, so one week before the uh, before the Edison uh, <laughs> Cup, so for our two videos, the first video saying that the Diva Hero deck is the best deck of the, of the uh, format, and the second one was a 40-minute video of how to beat it. So I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I, th I think the deck is really good. Uh, we talked a bit before. I think it's easily like one of the top two decks in the format. Yeah. yeah. I think there's so many... It's got so many like, power plays, like... When you think of iconic cards in Edison format, you think of like Future Fusion, Dark Home Dragon, Stratos, like Diva. You can play them like, all. This deck gets to play all of them. I was only different builds. Like you look at myself and the other Diva player in the room, Marcus, and our builds were quite different. Um, and like we talked a bit afterwards about the different things we would change because, um, yeah, no, it, but there's so many. Because what, what's you your stance on um, Tree One Frog, actually? I'm curious. It's, it's some offense. I think like you need to commit to it if you play it. I, yeah. I decided for the format to play it. My deck was really interesting. I, 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 I like Frog... it as an out to lad, you know, because I feel like the deck struggles too. Because it's like uh, most deck, if they play lad, it's their out to ab zero, you know. But if you have the tree born, it outs the lad. Yeah, no, it's, no, I mean, like when you get value of tree born, it's absurd. But there's a lot of times where it's just a dead draw and you already yeah. have like Mali's, uh, like Plague ish. Worse, right? no, no, Plague's Peg, Plague's Peg. <laughs> no, <right? laughs> Yeah, it does make bad eyes worse. But now there's so many like, different decks. Like you can play like Mystic Tomato. You can go heavy on the, the heroes with like Ocean and Alias. That's just a great thing about Edison in general, right? There's no yeah, yeah, so much list. There's for just sure. so much room for a uh, innovation. Yeah, but no one there is there's two weaknesses that I want to talk about with Diva, and that is mm -hmm. a point oppression, because you just you kinda of lose to that card like, all the time because like Miracle Fusion, Diva, so you need to play like a lot of outs to it. Mm. And the second one, which um, I also talked to Marcus about quite a bit, was the lack of getting to heroes. Because most of the heroes are really bad to draw, so you want to play a low count. So I think my list was one Stratos, one Prodigy, and two Mali. And that's it. 
Wow. The ways to get to it was see you obviously have rotor to get Stratos. You're foolish to send like Mali or like water if you need, or Treeborn Frog, which is what makes Treeborn slightly better. Uh, Armageddon Knight, which makes Rota a, a little bit better. You can get Stratos or Armor to send like Mali or Plague, which or is toolbox. kind of broken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Future Fusion. Um, one thing which I should have played was Mystic Tomato, which um, Marcus was playing. That was a really good card because like you would set it and people would think it's a snowman, which is, you know, what you yeah. said in, in Diva. And then you pop it. And then you somehow like, Armageddon, like, Plague, Malahy, it's like, what? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. quite nice. Yeah, no, for some I reason, when you, think of, when you think of Mystic Tomato, you don't think of summoning Malicious. Like, until Marcus yeah. told me that, I didn't really consider that as an option because for some yeah. reason, for some reason, I'm thinking level four or lower. I'm not thinking 1500 attack or lower. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> so when, when I was in testing against Marcus and he just summoned Mali off Tomato, I was like, oh, shit. And yeah, then he tributes summoned it real. for... Uh, yeah, exactly. For Caius, and it's just... so much value. Yeah, yeah for so sure. much value. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I was I was happy with my decision. I lost. Um, well, the, the match for losting be the tournament. I I misplayed it, so I I've got no complaints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, so, Boothroyd, you played Frog Monarch. I did. Tell us a little bit about Frog Monarch, man. Okay, so, well, I, I'm sure I'm quite public on my stance, like it's just one of, one of my favourite decks in general, I, I love Caius and such, but I wanted to play the deck because like coming from, like, I used to play a lot of a GOAT format, right, and that is quite, um, one of the things I would consider myself good at is resource management, and I feel like that deck is quite grindy and it rewards that, which is why I like that aspect of it. Uh, I feel like it's got a lot, like it's, it's a good game one deck, you know, so like if you don't know your, what your opponent's playing, it's pretty like safe bet. Uh, I think there's definitely weaknesses. It, it loses to a, a lot of side deck cards like Floodgates, like you know, Mask of Restrict. And you know, with the rise of popularity of Diva Hero, more people are starting pulling the rug, <laughs> which just kind of sucks because you know, pulling the rug on a Kaius just doesn't feel good. Um, but yeah, I just I think like it's all around like safe bet, and I like, get to play a lot of cards that I, I really enjoy. Um, that's that's why I chose to play it. It's just like a safe bet, and it suits my play style. I think that's one of the great side cards against both your decks is pulling the rug. Yeah. Um, it's very strong. I mean, but it's very it, goes without, scary. it goes without <laughs> saying it hits all of the Monarchs, which yeah. sucks for the Frog Monarch deck. But also against Diva Hero, it hits Deep Sea Diva, it hits Armageddon Knight, it hits Strauss, it hits uh, Kaius. Yeah. 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 So there's a, there's a lot. There's definitely a lot it can hit. Yeah. Um, I played Blackwing. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, no... I, I think Blackwing's a really solid deck. I definitely think it's in my top five. And we'll get on to, because Keegan very recently, uh, well, I think it was about a week ago now, a little bit more, put up a tier list. And um, I definitely do agree with him in that Blackwing's S tier because yeah. it has, it, it, you know, the cards, they synergize very well. It's very good at playing this aggro style. It's got Black Wall, in which, which is just one of the most like powerful cards in the deck. deck. It, it is a bit of a jack of all trades deck, and it gets yeah. to play Icarus, which is a um, a great, great trap card. Uh, I was a little bit. I I just thought that you know going into the tournament, obviously I didn't know what everyone was playing until mm -hmm. the day, um, but I thought that I wanted to play a deck that if I was up against like a more back row style deck, because I feel like we're going into this era of Edison now. It's quite cyclical where there's aggro decks to combat the aggro decks people start playing back row and then the format becomes more back row heavy until people yeah. start playing more removal then it becomes more combo again so i think we're kind of in that sweet spot right now where back row decks are really like doing very well and i think that's one of the reasons why we're seeing diva hero do so well because it can have these explosive plays but it can also uh very comfortably fit back row and so i wanted to play blackwing because you have in a, in a back row matchup, you have Icarus Attack, which is just a blowout. You're hitting two real cards every time with that Icarus Attack. Yeah. Um, so the one thing you've got to be careful of, obviously, is Starlight Road. But the, I, th I just think Icarus Attack was very strong. And also, I've got to mention this. Um, our first Edison Cup, Marcus Patel won with Gladiator Beasts. And I was looking at my decks because I was thinking of playing Light Sworn. I was like, yeah, I'm going to play Light Sworn. Um, but then again, across a longer tournament, it's a bit of a gamble. Like you're going to draw yeah. some bad hands. You're going to draw some Wolf Celestia hands, and it's just not going to be very good. And I was thinking, if Marcus decides to run back the Glads, what deck should I play? And I looked at all my cards, and I was like, Blackwing seems so sick against Glads. Yeah. Um, play Oppression, you get Icarus Attack. You've got Pollute Damage Step. 
So I was thinking, yeah, yeah let, let's let's it's take, really let's take charity, like, either. Exactly, exactly. But it turned out Marcus played uh, Diva Hero anyway. So, <laughs> you know, on the day I was a little bit like, ah, oh, damn. But it's fine. It is what it is. Um, cool. And it's and it's still like Blackwing is still a solid deck. So I'm happy I picked it. Mm. Um, what, what was your guys like? Uh, MVP card for the weekend. Oh, that's a tough one. Do, do I no, think... mine's easy. Mine yeah, is mine's easy. easy. <laughs> Let's just say, man's gonna say diva. <laughs> What's no, yours? Mine, mine was super poly. Super poly was broken. <laughs> Ooh, that oh, is a cheap yeah, deck. Yeah. Uh, so I played uh, Marcus in the mirror, and it was obviously like insane man because he went. Um, so I think I went like set treeborn pass or something and he went all right cool summon diva summon diva valley summon valley i went i have to be super poly unreal <laughs> summon summon abs <laughs> ah i see <laughs> the mirror match i can't unreal. say it. and i play betty as well so <laughs> oh nice yeah, yeah. uh betty yeah. was playing hero, hero beat. beat i can yeah. imagine it would have been quite nice there um Might do, what are you playing it, yeah i think the mvp it, it was sad it wasn't even a frog one like card man it was a side deck tech um, cause I was, I, I think I, I wouldn't say I overly prepared for Black Wings, but I, I was expecting lots. I, I put in like quite a lot of hate for it in my side. Um, mm-hmm. and I sided Nobleman of Extermination. You know, like the, Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So you target a set trap, right? Or so, and if it's a trap, sorry, set, uh, set spell or trap. And if it's a trap card, you have, they have to banish all copies from the deck. So I was like, I'm coming for those Icarus attacks. I'm coming for those, those chariots. Cause I, I lost to, I made it to the, in the first, I just got like the, the, Winners final before the grand final against Marcus, and I, I slipped and I, I lost the Gladbys, and I was I didn't want to do that again. So, um, <laughs> More removal. Yeah. Um, so you put in those exterminations. For yeah, the I, I did, fortunately I didn't, I didn't get to see against you, Barney, but I definitely saw against Moffat, and he was he was unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. One one more card that I wanted to shout out was DD Warrior Lady. That card was insane for me. I played wow. one in the yeah, no, it I, was it was really good against V. I have to admit. <laughs> I played one in the side because I'm. I obviously play Rota, so it's just it's one kind of a main that helps you in like quite a lot of matchups where it just makes Rota slightly better because you, you get two copies of it for one. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> maybe before you banish Treeborn Frog, I think I decided it in against um, Gabriel's Zombies as well. Um, maybe some other matchups, I can't remember, but no, the card was, the card was very good. Yeah, no, that does sound really good actually. Um, that is a nice tech. That's one of the reasons why I think I want to play Angels, um, like in the future, a little bit more, because I just think DD Warrior Lady is really solid. Being able to crash your Shining Angel, summon a DD Warrior Lady. Yeah, it's very I, just think that's, yeah. I just think that's quite nice. Solid play. Yeah. Uh, I'd say was... my, yeah, my favorite card, uh, or my best card. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be quite boring and just say a Blackwing card. I think Blizzard just did wonders for me. Uh, I low key think it's the best card in the Blackwing deck. How much I think it's really? Best. Scale have. I think it's better than Kalut. <laughs> oh yeah, we won't talk about that. Oh, you guys have to watch the uh, how how yeah. the features. Um, Mandela no, effect. I, I swear, I swear it's the Mandela effect. I yeah. swear Blizzard has twelve hundred attack, and we've gone to an alternate universe where Blizzard. You know, like, oh, you know buddy. So did I. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> oh, Blizzard what? Had twelve. <laughs> yeah. I swear Blizzard had thirteen hundred attack. I'm gonna get roasted. But anyway, <laughs> look, I think Blizzard is my favorite card because. Um, I just, I don't know, I was searching it with Whirlwind way more than I was searching Kalut with Whirlwind because I think if you're summoning a Blackwing, just being able to have Blizzard in your hand as follow-up. Um, and you can bluff but... the Kalut, right? They're always scared of it anyway. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. You can always bluff Kalut. If you just keep a couple of cards in your hand, you're always able to bluff the Kalut. But I just feel a lot safer when I know I have a Blizzard in my hand should my Shore or Bora get destroyed, you yeah. know? So that's why I was set. I was only really searching Kalut when I already had Blizzard. That was the only time, you know. Mm. So, yeah, um, that that's probably my favorite card. So, yeah, obviously we're making this podcast to talk about our Edison Cup. Um, the first video is coming out on the Thursday round one. That is going to be Marcus Patel, the current Edison Cup champion, versus Connor. Um, that is going to be a Diva Hero versus uh, Light Sworn matchup. So stay tuned for that coming out on Thursday. Um, oh, and also, I'm going to be um, commentating round one with Keegan from E3 Yu-Gi-Oh. So big shout out to Keegan! Thank you so much for um, for coming on and helping us um, commentate. 
because you know we have a lot of fun making it like you know yeah, yeah. Doing the citizen cup yeah it's 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 banter between friends it's a lot yeah. of fun um but i think uh, this time a lot of people prepared harder than, than we did in the summer cup oh, I know I did, uh, I did, yeah. as did i as did i yeah there was time put into my list so i'll tell you <laughs> for sure and like um, every matchup had... was a was a grind every match. It was, was grind. yeah, yeah. For yeah, me, yeah. my it was very like people were practicing Edison, and I could tell straight mm. away. We have some great prizes as well for our for our team for our tournament within our team. Um, we started doing prize cards for first and second place. This time we had brain control. It's full art prize card. Um, if you watch shout our, <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you watch our yeah, trailer, yeah. if you watch our trailer that we put out on Monday. Um, well, today, but we're recording this, I think, a day early. Yeah. Uh, so what, watch our trailer for the Edison Cup, and you'll see the first the first prize card is full art brain control. Um, so everyone was very excited about that. And obviously, mm -hmm. having your name on the trophy, that's a forever thing, you know? You mm -hmm. want to get on that trophy eventually. So, you know, it's banter between friends, but we're all taking it very seriously, and it's a lot of fun. Dude, everyone um, wants a piece, man. Everyone wants the name on the cup, you know? It's high stakes. Yeah. <laughs> But I guess the main thing we're doing this for, right, is is to show people how great of a format Edison is and how people should, you know, more people should get into Edison. Um, mm. it, 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 in my opinion, it is the best format. I mean, I don't play modern anymore, um, but I still play Edison. I probably always will. So I think it's great. And I think that moves on quite nicely to what else is going on with Edison besides our Edison Cup. Um, I like the Rivet? Please stage. Yeah, yeah, like the Rivet. Yeah. 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 So, uh the Ribbit or RBET tournament um, is a tournament by E3 Yu-Gi-Oh! and the Edison Format Library uh, and, and Discord, EdisonFormat.com. Um, and stream, they, so. it, it was a great stream, really good stream. What one in the end? Was it Vayu? Vayu, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a very good deck. And we also saw some decks that we've never seen before, didn't we? Well, yeah. So like much the, innovation in the right? format. Yeah. Mm. I love just how like people just like, can can look at before from like such a fresh like different perspective yeah like it, it's such a, a like not yeah, like, like someone just looks like hard format. for ages you know and they're like what can yeah. i do here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think you guys are completely right the fact that the format's 12 years old at this point and you're still seeing someone 12 years later top eight with a deck like amaryllis burn i don't think <laughs> i've ever seen anyone play amaryllis no. in no. edison format yeah. Never. Or Volcanic Counter, the, and just seeing that deck. Yeah. Volcanic Counter, that's a dual card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you see this deck, and you're seeing it perform, and you're seeing him kill people like quite comfortably with this deck, and you're thinking, wow, how has no one thought of this before? And I just think that's one of the amazing. most amazing things about this format, is that it's forever changing. I think, <clears throat> I think Vayu was a good shout, though, because I think like if you're expecting a lot of Diva Hero, Vayu does have like a, a favourable matchup, I'd say, or like, in comparison to like a backring versus Diva Hero. No, Definitely, it, yeah. just a very good deck. Yeah. It? It's a like, very, it's a very solid deck. I, I think like Diva Hero is a very jack of all trades deck, but also it has some cards that are quite natively good against Diva Hero. You've got Raiku, Raiko, which trades favor favorably with uh, a, a card like Abzero, and yeah. you've got Oppression, which is a blowout card against Diva. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and the fact that Vayu can play under its own Oppression, but Diva Hero can't. Yeah. Yeah. Like that is a very nice interaction yeah. for the Vayu deck, so I definitely think Vayu is a great pick, and it makes sense that it won considering the amount of DV era that was in the tournament. Yeah, agreed. Um, but there's going to be—I think they're going to be making six uh, Rivet tournaments this year, I think, and then there's going to be if you manage to top. Forgive me if I'm wrong, guys, but if if you top sixteen, I think, or top eight. You end up in the Ribbit Grand Championship Finals Ooh. or something, which is going to be taking place in November, which is only for the Top Cut members. So we'll have to catch the next one next week. We were doing our, our tournament at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. So we weren't allowed. We couldn't we participate. Mm. Yeah, but I'm definitely yeah. going to be doing all of them from now on. Yeah, um, because it sounds amazing. <laughs> and I think being able to play with Ed Edison with people from all over the world is great because there's a lot of great uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players out there and, and a lot of people that love Edison. So, um, what do you guys think about? In I know we were just talking about innovation of the format. You got a deck like Amaryllis Burn, which is just coming out of the woodwork and doing well. But the state of the format right now for Edison, where do you think it will go in the next six months? Between now, obviously, the out, after the outcome of our 
um, Edison Cup tournament going into the next one and going into future Ribbit tournaments, what do we think is the format's going to shape up like, basically? I think Dragons are going to take names. <laughs> I think that deck needs Drew, to be optimized. Do I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I agree that it needs to be optimized. Right now, I feel like... It's got it's, so uh, much potential. It's got yeah. so much potential. Like right There's now, so many crazy dragon cards. Or, or Dragon with back row? I'm not sure. Just just a, a Dragon deck, I think, will like okay, it's, prove I mean, itself yeah. as one of the best. It is obviously like one of the best decks of a format, but oh. there's no like conventional I, like yes like I, this is the dragon deck like I, there's a lot of dragon decks i think they need to like make it like i feel like deck, two you know? out of five like, games is one of the best decks but if, if, if i i don't want to i couldn't play it comfortably you know it's like a large scale tournament similar to lights one you know because it's, it's i don't think it's consistent enough to warrant an ST spot in my opinion i, I would say a if it but i agree with you henry i think it needs to be optimized i think so too i mean you've got the deep draw dragon deck which is you know very explosive and um but the, the only the only downside to a deck that has such a high ceiling as that is that it becomes very streamlined and very one trick pony where it's a linear, the game right? almost the, yeah very linear where the game plan is to just draw 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 until you know you've got the perfect hand and then summon a load of dragons and attack the game which is a perfectly fine strategy but mm. i think at the minute where we are right now with a lot of back row you want a deck that can be more versatile and that can play through certain things and do certain things. And that's why I think in the future we'll see uh, a more back row intensive dragon deck doing quite well. I'd love to see um, dragons, you know, a more, I mean, a slower dragon deck could still play future fusion. Um, I don't know if there would be... That card is card, yeah. card's absurd in dragons. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like an auto win. It's, it's crazy. It's Mario 5, though, like... Which makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like some dragon decks, like, uh, again, to E3 Yu Gi Oh! I mean, shout out to these guys. They do some amazing content and they put out a lot of different videos and deck lists to take a look at. And I was recently watching one of their videos where they were just playing, you know, they weren't playing the White Stones, they weren't playing Blue Eyes, they were playing Triple. Uh, uh, What's the little red eye? Is it red eyes wyvern? The one that's yeah, 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 yeah. darkness metal from the grave. Three of that, three of the red eyes darkness metal. They were playing, you know, they weren't playing trading. They were just playing like a more control list. Uh, I think multiple quacking errors in the main, and then some nice back row. I think if you're able to set up a big, big beater plus a oppression, like then flip oppression, Oof. Oof, you know, that powerful. would be nice. <laughs> that would be very nice. Yeah. So, uh, do, do, did you want to talk about a bit about the, the, the tier list also? Or? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do that. Good shout. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, go on, Bruce. Yeah, so the the guys over at E3 made made um, a tier list, you know, and we're not going to be like um, nitpicking at it, which kind of sharing our, because you know, it's like an opinion thing, right? We're going to be sharing our opinions on it, uh, if we, things we agree with, things we don't agree with. Um, so, like, would you guys have it up on your screens as well? Yeah, yeah, I've like got it. it. Yeah, yeah, I've got it on my phone. Um, the <laughs> the S tier consists. Do, do you want to like take a look tier by tier or deck by deck? Uh, uh, tier by tier. Yeah, I think it'd be yeah, 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 one, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So in in the S tier, we have um, Ab Zero or Diva, like definitely the, uh, hero decks with Ab Zero decks, right? Um, yeah. Black Wings, Dragons, and Light Swan. I think that right. It's GD. Yeah. So what, what do you think about that? I think okay, so. In my opinion, those are the top four decks in the format. I think they've got it absolutely right. But I talked with Barney earlier. Uh, we're definitely a disagreement on what the best deck is. Obviously, we, we both said that the other person's deck is the best deck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's really odd, I think that, You would have thought, I like... I think Blackwings. Th but you both played the other decks, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I th okay, so when I think of the, the scariest board in Edison, it's not like... Glad for back row. It's not like dragons. It's like Teaking sure set one pass because like they could have Kalu in hand. That's it. Could be Icarus. <laughs> it could be Mirror Force. Dude, it's it's the scariest. I like you can't like make a mistake because once you like make a mistake, you you're taking like six k damage and you're like dead. Yeah, they they, like, they, they very punish scary. stuff and it, like there's so many options. You know, it's hard to play around everything because there's so many power yeah. cards. And the deck gets to play the best card in the format, which is Royal Oppression that's and Whirlwinds and Dead. I don't know, it's too much. It's too scary. <laughs> I think Blackwing, you're definitely right in that Blackwing can capitalise off the opponent making mistakes. 
Mm. Um, unlike, you know, some other decks, if Black Wings see a window to punch, they will punch and they will punch will, you very they hard. Will punch you hard. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that is the nice thing about Black Wing. But I where where we were talking and I was disagreeing with you, I think Diva Hero is is more um right now anyway, is more of a diverse deck in that there's more plays. When you're summoning your guy and you're passing, um or when you're got stuff in your hand, I'm thinking, okay, I've got to clear that monster, otherwise he's gonna chaos me. True. Or um oh man but even if i clear that monster he's going to summon deep sea diva and then he's going to do this or what if i'm overthinking all of this and he's just got miracle fusion in hand anyway and i'm <laughs> and i'm screwed either way do you know what i mean yeah. or what if that back row is if, oh, i need to summon this guy to clear this monster but what if that back row is a phoenix wing wind blast and what if he pitches the mallee off the phoenix wing wind blast like <laughs> ah! and then it just yeah, that was fair enough, fair enough. yeah. Um, no, the deck is yeah that deck is yeah both decks are very scary i agree and i think like okay so like I think Ab Zero is like so broken in innocent format. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, agreed ahead of its time. Like the the only way to to not trigger Ab Zero once it like gets on the field is to book it and then like compulse it. Like that's it. Like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's always triggering, which is it's just such a it's so safe. Like yeah. when you have abs, like you're just not dying. It's crazy. Yeah. You can chill if you've got an Ab Zero on the yeah. board. Yeah. If you're like summoning abs into like a full board. So that board's gone. Yeah. <laughs> that board yeah. is gone. <laughs> yeah. I agree with Keegan here in that uh, Light Sworn is, is the low end of S tier. I agree. Um, 100% because although although I love Light Sworn and it's one of my favorite decks and I think it has the deck that it, it and I love I love nice rarity cards. Yeah. Um, and I think Light Sworn is one of the decks that can that can play some really nice rarity cards. I mean they all can but Lights one decks do look very pretty, um, but that being said, I think it's a bit of a gamble deck. Yeah. I agree. Uh, the longer the the longer the tournament goes, the worse it's going to do. Yeah. And because you're like... never. No, go on. Yeah. No, no. I was just going to say what yeah. I, I think we we're about to say the same thing in that you're inevitably going to draw some awful hands. Yeah. Um, bad hands. Like some double yeah, hands. It, it's almost <laughs> like the the skill expressions coming from like managing the variants, not even like playing the game, you know, and like that's yeah. like. Yeah. Which isn't know. a bad thing. It's, yeah. it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but I, I think with, um, yeah, I think we look at Light Swan and Dragons. The reason why they're below Diva and Black Wings is that those two decks are so consistent. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They they all yeah. do their thing almost every single game, and it, and the emphasis is on you to try and beat it. Mm. I think personally. I'm just... I would like to see dragons in the A tier until optimized. I think it could, like every Barney, it could be an S tier. I, I don't think it's there currently for me. I, I wouldn't put it there. Um, would you I put anything in its place? Um, I'm not sure. Too. Like, I, I'm happy with Blackwing Ab Zero. I, I like. I think Light Swan for me like would be like a, a low S deck because you, know, you can argue that like it's not always going to be consistent enough to be high S tier. But then like, it, it's. Sometimes it's just going to get you there anyway. Oh. No oh, difficulties, guys. Oh, he's oh, back. He's sorry. back. You... Boothoid has rejoined the booth. Yo, what happened there? <laughs> I don't know. You just left. You're back. You're back. Okay. Back. Is... Yeah, sorry. Are we still recording? Happened. Yeah, still recording. Yeah, sorry. Okay, nice. Where did That's I get up to? Um, you were just talking about how Light Spawn is nice at the end of S. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um... Sorry, oh, I've lost the flipping um, tier list now. That's oh, alright. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. Like sometimes it's, it's just gonna get you there anyway. You know, even even if I get because you you gonna draw two wolf sometimes, but sometimes you can multi wolf. So yeah, I I would put that either either like low end of S tier. Agree, but I think dragons for me personally would be like A tier at best at the moment. There's one there's one deck here that that I think should be slightly higher <laughs> on on Keegan's tier list, and I think that zombies. Um, oh, sorry. I think, do you want to go uh, tier by tier first, just to? Oh yeah, go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. So for stealing yeah, who's, who's got the the tier list up? Because I have just lost it. Bear with me. Yeah, in A we have Vayu, we have the Ancient Gear Turbo, we have Diva Frog Monarch, and we have Gladiator Beast. Yeah. I agree with all of those, apart from I think Zombie should be in A as well. I I heavily disagree with Ancient Gears. <laughs> <laughs> I know, really? I know I know people are very high in it. I have seen like. I've just seen like no results. I'm 
Dex mad and consistent. It loses to System Down and Cyber Dragon. Once it gets like even slightly good in the format, like it's it's not even that consistent. You'll see hands of like Gollum, Gadgetron, because I've I've tested it quite a bit because I was like this deck is monkey. I want to I want to try this deck. This deck is angry. <laughs> Nice. I think yeah, it's got I, some potential. Of, um, the, you can't activate spells or traps when they attack, right? Yeah. yeah. So in, which is, in, which a, is in a back or heavy format, like it, it's nice in theory, yeah. but I, I agree with you. I I would much rather see a yeah. zombie in A tier over gadget. It's not gadget, sorry. Um, uh, oh gosh, ancient gear. Ancient gear. Yeah. I think I think the the deck is much stronger when it's not known. I think once it's known, it, it's That's far true. weaker. Yeah. Agree. Agree. That's agree. True. Um, there's a really nice card in Ancient Gear, the Ancient Gear Beast. Uh, it has a very similar effect to Reviving Pardes, in that if it destroys a monster by battle, that monster's effect is negated, and they're negated forever. If if, a, if an yeah. Ancient Gear Beast yeah. hits over your set value, that value is never allowed to activate. That's in its crazy. Grave for the rest That's of the crazy. Door. People don't know this as well. Yeah. So yeah, be I mean. be yeah. careful. Big be punish. careful about the Ancient Gear Beast, ladies and gentlemen. That is yeah. a scary <laughs> card. Yeah, I, I do agree with Bancroft. I think it's um it's a lot stronger when you get the surprise factor, you know. Yeah. Because like especially game one, like if you might just set the fire, you think they'll think, oh, they might think it's a Riker, oh, oh, and then you get punished. Sure. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, sorry for people at home. The A tier. I'm not sure if you went through it. Is Vayu Ancient Gears, Diva, um, Frogs, and Gladiator Bees. Yes, and that is uh, something really interesting. Boothroid is that the Diva, the the Frog Monarch with the Diva engine is is in here. But uh, if I remember rightly, you decided against playing the Diva engine yeah. in your Frog Monarch deck for yeah. the Edison Cup. So I, I I tested it, and don't get me wrong, I definitely think it's like a great thing. It's like maybe it was like a playstyle difference. I'm not sure because I I do agree that it's like a great strategy, and like being able to use the extra deck is really enticing. You know, it opens up like a lot more play potential. Um, but when I was founding, maybe like, I had to optimize my list, but I, I just found like it, it was too many conflicting normal summons because like, in a lot of sense, like not the diva's an extra monarch, you know, but it's like an extra normal summon, and like the, a lot of the hands you open were like all normal summons, or like I, I would much maybe this is a hot take, but I would much rather open all frogs than all normal summons because like the, the frogs are playable, you know. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, you can get, like duplog, flip flip flop if you play that, you can play right. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the the hands where you like break the hardest are just like the all normal summon hands. So I'd, I'd much rather play cards like like Upstart. I don't really. I know you can play Moray of Greed and such, but then again, I'm, I'm getting rid of my frogs a lot of the time for to draw what like four monarchs, and it's like I just got rid of the frogs. I, I just found it like it was trying to do a bit too much for me personally. I like, I'm more of like a stay in my lane guy. I like the grand game. <laughs> I do. I I like the explosive turns, and I, I do think the deck has a lot of power plays that the, the frog monarch deck can't do. But I'm not sure if I would, like, I would happily see them on the same tier. I I, I think that they're, they're different. I, I I'm not trying to say the one's better than the other. I personally I prefer the the, the straight frog one deck. Sure, that's fair. I think both yeah. decks are a bit too exploitable to be honest. I think they lose a bit too hard to uh, stuff like um, a colossal armory on OTKs. Yeah, like okay. popular yeah. side deck cards like DD Crow and Gene Disappearance. Yeah. I think both side comes very hard to win. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I, most of most of my side decks for the tournament was like almost anti side in a way. You know, like I, I wasn't siding for the yeah, matchup. Yeah, I was I siding agree. to out the people the outs that they were going to play for me. I was siding removal to get rid of master restrict or stuff 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 like that. You know, um, so I, I I'd, I'd agree with you there. You have to focus like it's not as optimal games games two and three. Um, but then I think you, you to compensate you know you have, you have a pretty strong game one. Um. Mm. Whereas, like, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's, they're, they're different. I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed. I, I, I would personally put them both in B tier. I think. I don't think either of them would be an A tier. Yeah, deck. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. But what about Gladiator Beast? Because that was the deck that won our Summer Cup for the first time. Mm-hmm. I think I think Glad's is top of A. I think Glad's is definitely Ooh, top of A. Mm. Um. I think in the right hands, Glad could beat any of the S tier decks very comfortably. Uh, I think it's strong. I think if it's piloted well without any mistakes. I mean, Chariot is a powerhouse. Geysaris is a powerhouse. Geysaris is a Celestia that you can special summon from your extra deck. I do think um, it's hard to play deck, no? It rewards skill expression. I think, yeah, I think a lot of people have this misconception where Glad's is very easy to play, and I guess. Not. I guess they're right and they're wrong because, like, activating chariots is easy, but playing Gabby's is hard, right? I was all right. Like, yeah, you know? 
some people say, oh my God, how hard is it to summon a Lequari, set four pass, flip a chariot on the opponent's monster, effect on attack the next turn? I mean, yeah, fair enough. Okay, that 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 is like monkey gameplay. But when you think about the actual nuances of the deck um, and some of the lists people come out with, I mean, you've got so many different types of glads. You've got Prisma glads. You've got the glads that did well in the Pumpkin Games tournament. Again, shout out to E3 Yu-Gi-Oh! Where there was a glad beast deck that was playing Hamster. Uh, with, it's very fun. With it's Ryko, and they, fun. they were playing X Saber Airbellum to make Synchro yeah. plays. And, like, some of those decks are amazing. I mean, Chariot's a broken card. And I think when your resources are very. You're, like, Glads play very tight on their resources. All their cards are real. And so you've really got to think in certain situations am I, am I summoning the Mamillo to pop this guy's monster with this Glad? Because then I've got an 800 attack guy that's definitely going to die next turn. Do I have backup for that? Or am I summoning a quest to get this glad back out of the grave or to get this chariot out of the yeah. grave? Or, do you I, know I, what I mean? You've yeah. got definitely most micro decisions. Spot, you know, like, cause you, you have all these micro decisions. The same thing that makes it hard to play is also something that makes makes it 80. You know, it's, it's so toolboxy as well. Like you, ha you have a glad beast for pretty much any situation you want, you know, if you can get to it yeah. by attacking out. Yeah, I think glads is the most modern deck in Edison, if that makes sense. Like you have like fifteen or so glad beast cards, which all like fetch each other, which is like just not, which is unheard of in Edison format. But I, I think it's about where it should be in the list. I think you're playing a backward deck that loses to oppression, which is very scary. <laughs> I yeah, think, yeah. yeah. If it didn't lose so, to oppression, I, I think it would be like S S tier. Mm, that's true. That's true. <laughs> glad does like lose. Yeah. Later, like low, low to, yeah. Like so I'm looking at next to the, the oh, oh sorry yeah like the the Vayu deck you know and like I I I I would agree that Vayu is top of A tier because like I'm not even I'm I'm conflicting opinions with like if you were to put a Vayu deck against a Light Swan deck like ten games I'd be interested to see the ratio of who how many times each deck won. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Yeah, so I I, I like Vayu top of A. I'd probably put Glad Beasts above Ancient Gears. <laughs> But that, that's that's me. Yeah, <laughs> I like why you top of A as well. Um, I agree with you in that it'd be very interesting to see where Lights One and Vayu end up if they were to play ten matches against each other. Because yeah. I, in my head, and I don't know why, because I mean, oh well, <laughs> both of the decks are quite resilient, but but in my head they're on the same power level for very different reasons. Like, you can't really very compare them. Because Lights yeah. One is Lights One is very explosive. Vayu is very controlled, but in my head, I, I, for some reason, I just feel like they're on equal footing, and I don't know yeah. why that is, but that would be a cool experiment to do. Um, yeah. for sure. I think if, my difference yeah. with those decks is I'm scared with Light Swans, I'm scared of the whole deck, like there are so many power cards. With Vayu, I'm yeah. just scared of oppression. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Uh, if we look at the B tier, I mean, I don't think there's any point going from C downwards, right, guys? Agreed. Yeah. For now, yeah. should we just should we just stop after B? But yeah. if you yeah. guys look, there's a lot of decks in B tier. Um, mm -hmm. We have Angels, uh, Grave Keepers, Zombies, X Savers, Fish OTK. We have uh, the Edison format version of Teledad. We have Quick Draw Dandy. We have uh, a brew that Keegan come up with or piloted, should I say, the other week, which was. Um, Light Sworn Vayu with, I think that he played a couple of zombies in there as well, maybe a Plague, maybe a Mizuki Ooh. and stuff. We have regular Frog Monarch, we have, I I believe that's Hero Beat, yeah, and cool. we have, yeah, and we have a Flanvel and the Volcanic Dandy deck. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I don't know where to where begin to with start? this. I mean, that's a lot, a of, lot decks. of decks. It's a lot of decks. In my in my opinion, I think Angels and Zombies should be bottom of A. When I'm looking at a deck that's, okay. you know, yeah, especially this format anyway. If I'm if I'm looking at a deck, I'm looking at how good is its grind game, how how good are its pushes and its boss monsters. Can it play trap cards? And if so, can it play good trap cards? And um, you know what. What support cards can it play? Can it play some nice offensive and nice defensive cards? So for Angels, they have Raiko. They can play good trap cards. Um, they have, you know, nice recruiters. They all float. Uh, I think the good thing about both of these decks is that they can all float, right? I mean, Zombies yeah. can float very well. Very resilient decks. Yeah, yeah. Angels can float very well. 
And they've both got explosive plays in that um, Angels can just summon Christia out of anywhere. And zombies can just go ham out of anywhere. You know, what zombies... I like about Angels is like they, they do well into the more meta decks, you know, as well. Like that, Yeah. The, yeah, that they, can, they can play into a, a meta right now. So yeah, I, I'd agree with you at the bottom of A tier. DD Warrior Lady is, is a very nice card. I would actually disagree. I think both... Um, well, it's, disagree. I think both Angels and Zombies are actually higher than bottom of A tier. I think they're better than Glads, better than Ancient Gears, and Ooh. better than Diva Frogs. Okay, I, 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 yeah. I think both two decks are like very I like good. I think, yeah. I think most two decks are like. I definitely incredible. agree with the above <laughs> the Ancient Gear and the above the Diva Frog. I haven't really thought about too much in its comparison to Gladiator Beast because I think it's like a bit different to compare. But I do, I do yeah, agree with yeah, that. Like, I'd like to see them in the, yeah. in the A tier for sure. The zombies just have so many power cards. So, yeah. so many. They've got, like, have you read Book of Life? That card is crazy. It's Crow in a format, Bond, it's mad. In a format which is like a very graveyard reliant, you go Book of Life, summon back like a plague, banish like a treeborn or a yeah. plague, or like a Mali. It's crazy value. Dude, Zombie I think... World's a good card as well, I think. Zombie World is a good card. Come in and post zombie side. I mean, some, decks, yeah. zombie, some, some zombie lists I've seen main it. Um, but this ties us in nicely into what we were saying a little bit earlier about the top Edison decks and how that's always changing and that even after 12 years like no one was playing zombies 12 years ago no one was playing no zombies. one yeah but well, the deck was just hit right they just put um, yeah yeah was it bazooki to one yeah there was yeah, Goblin zombies basically well. before edison format one of the best decks or arguably it was like tier 0.5 nearly to zero at that point like i think in the previous tournament to the edison tournament 15 of the top 16 decks were either some zombie light swan uh yeah, variants a lot. <laughs> because you had you had three lumina you had three mizuki you had three plague spreader zombie you had three necro gardener um, that's a lot that's a lot you had, you had three malicious right and when you've got all of those oh, wow. cards together like do you know what i mean they they were just playing three lumina three lila then they were playing three charge of the light brigade with three solar recharge and then all those zombie cards at three it's just like so all of those cards got heavily hit leading up into Edison. And I don't think anyone expected Zombies to do well. But as we saw again from the Pump King of Games tournament, which is another Edison, uh, Ed Ed and Edison tournament. Rest um, in peace, Connor, who came second that tournament. Yeah. <laughs> one, uh, one of our boys at the Disciples, Connor, came second with his Light Swan deck. Um, and you'll you be able see. to see yeah, yeah on Thursday. Yeah. His round one will be up on Thursday. Um so that is very exciting against Marcus, the current champion mm. uh, of the Edison Cup. So besides that, do you guys think there's anything else in B that should be higher? I think Hero Beat could be higher. Uh, I think I, could be higher. I'd I think like a lot of people talk about Fish OTK. Oh, wow. um, okay. so I, I, I need more right. that yeah. deck to the, um, this cup. Actually, I, I was really interested by it. I, I think it's a deck like so you could say about Ancient Gears or. Maybe other decks. That I don't want to spoil any tournament results, but you know, but if, if you're unprepared for it, I feel like it, it can take a lot of game by surprise because it's quite fast-paced. Um, I think it, I think it's similar to Dragons in a lot of ways. Like, it, I don't think it's been optimized, but like, it, it does what it does really well. Um, and I think that yeah. can steal a lot of games if people, people aren't prepared for it. I actually disagree. I think the meta has got to a point where Fishutake is like almost too slow. It needs like a couple of turns of setup where the best decks yeah. from a format right now, like Diva and Black Wings, are just going to take advantage of you. I think it's it's a good deck. I think it's at least like high B. But yeah. I think uh, I think it's the format's a bit unfavorable for it at the moment. Yeah, I, 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 I could be wrong. That, yeah. I could be wrong. No, could I, be wrong. I, I, do, I, I agree with that. The format is definitely unfavorable for it at the moment with all of the control and all of the back row going on. I think yeah. as we start to see more people with the back row hate and more people with um, you know main decking, when we see people main decking stuff like Dust, Tornado, and things like that, you know it's yeah. really heavy background. I think we're coming into that now. I'm considering playing Dust Tornado for the next Edison Cup, and I'm kind of gutted I didn't play Ooh. it for this one because, <laughs> because there was there was a lot of uh, background. So I think the more that starts to happen, then the less people ba play background, and then when people play background less, then bigger, more explosive decks start yeah. to take advantage yeah, of like those people playing less background. Well, so it's, it's like exactly. a, yeah, it's like this a loop. Is... <laughs> so, so, I know I've talked about Royal Oppression quite a lot in this podcast, but that's because this tournament, the only decks that I lost to were playing Royal Oppression. Yeah, um, I only lost to Royal Oppression decks the whole event. I only lost to Corsair Fighter Armory Arm. 
really pretty much <laughs> consistently. Sorry, Boo Freud. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Boo Freud. How many times were you hit by it? Uh, you it? Four, four games. <laughs> at, at, yeah, Sorry. Four games. That's crazy. Mm, I, <laughs> uh, How are you for time right now? Are you okay? Uh, we're, we're about 47 minutes in, I think. Oh, nice one. Yeah. Should we, should we, are there any other decks that you guys, I think Kira Beat should have been higher, should have been higher. Uh, I, I know it's kind of. No, I think it's got a lot it. of powerful cards though. Like the, the engine works really well together, you know, it's like really, um, abusable. Like one, like once you establish like an ocean hero blast kind of vibe, like I, I think it's got like a solid footing, you know, it's like a high pressure. I, I, I think Gemini yeah. Spark is great as well. Yeah. Gemini agree, Spark's yeah. a lovely card. That's um, crazy. I agree. The fact that it's quick <laughs> quite draw dandy. It's 2022. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to say. It's just a bit dated, you know. Like, it's really cool and flashy, but it's not, I don't think it's practical. It's, like, it's not... It's really underwhelming, I, I'd say. Yeah. I like the innovations in it. Um, I like the volcanic cards. If anyone's seen the Relinquish deck, but Dude, be like, it's just everyone with, trying with draw to make bit. it. Yeah, they're just trying right? to make, because, like, I mean, like, it makes sense, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's got like, Debris Dragon, it's got Dandelion, it's got Load Fire. These are small powerful engine, cards. So it's like, it should be a lot of room to to do stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It just doesn't. Obviously, doesn't the lovely work. thing about Edison format is that any deck can win, uh, oh. given the right skill skill play, the the right pilot for the deck. Um, and obviously, for those of you that don't know, Dandy, Dandy, Quick Draw Dandy was the deck that won SJC Edison, the yeah. actual format that, the that coined format this whole format. format. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that that is, you know, not to laugh at, but I think 12 years on. Jeff Jones, right? We, yeah. And yeah. I think, again, one of the reasons why this format is so unsolved is because the list just, bef just before this tournament dropped, and like I say, you had Plague, Mizuki, Necrogardner, Lumina, Charge of the Light Brigade, um, all go to one. Like so many other cards go to one as well. Mm. And after that, you know, all the top decks got very hardly hit. And so, I mean, Quick Dandy won the event. No one saw it coming. No one thought that that deck was going to do anything. But it's an ama it, it was an amazing deck for the time. Um, and it did really, you know, cement this, this fact because the format is very unsolved and it still remains unsolved 12 years later. Uh, but yeah, nowadays I think the, there's there's so many better options. I have no respect for Quick Bandy anymore. The only respect yeah. I have for it is that it coined the format. Um, yeah. I'm not scared. Personally, I'm not scared if I'm facing a Quick Bandy deck, and I'm it's yet to see the format. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It can't I would kill love you. to see. I'd love to see yeah. someone one day winning a tournament with Quick Bandy and, and sure. doing some more innovation. I think it needs I just more innovation. Don't think Drill War it's is a threatening, dude. No. It's even <laughs> Yeah. It's a deck that that doesn't play floodgates and can't kill you. Like, what am I scared of? Yeah, exactly. literally. What am, yeah. Exactly. Literally, what am I scared when, of? When I think of I can the just ball, play my like, game. <laughs> it just seems like I can I can deal with that. You yeah. can't play a deck in this format anymore where you don't have to respect it. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. There, there's too many like like any deck can can win right, but there, there's like there's a tier list for a reason, you know, and like it's just a bit dated. I, I think. Like it's a sick Agreed. deck, right? But it, it, yeah, I don't know. We, I think we said it pretty, summed it up pretty well. Do we want to say anything on Flambell? Um, watch the uh, Disciples Cup. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a, like a deck. Like we mentioned, like yeah, <laughs> Ancient Gears and the Fisher TK. Like it, it has potential. I think it definitely has potential. And yeah. there was one of there was one Flambell deck in our tournament. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah. Again guys like comment subscribe and make sure you turn the notification bell on because we're going to be posting these uh these mm -hmm. edison format uh, edison cup uh, videos so we've got some great matches for you guys to see a lot yeah. of different decks like we've said um and flanvel was one of those decks and it, personally it was a deck that i wasn't uh testing a lot against before going into the edison cup so agreed and yeah, yep. yeah um, <laughs> shout out to the sponsors, you know, Metamats, Car Market, the Brotherhood, everyone yes. that tunes in and has subscribed thus far. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that's that's it. Every, uh, do you have any closing thoughts from you guys? Uh, I think we've covered everything. Yeah. Do you guys think we've covered everything? We have. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys, you guys for watching. One. Yeah.
yeah, yeah. see you guys next one and thanks people. everyone watch, watch Thursday first Thursday, round one yeah. oh Thursday yeah, yeah. Round one, round one. Barney and Keegan commentators let's go yeah, yeah. yeah.